when someone says to you, what's the best camera to use, it's a very, very complicated question. It's, you know, <coughs> what does the script look like? Where are you going to be? What is the environment like? Is it going to be cold? Is it going to be overly hot? Is it going to be dusty? Are you going to be underwater? You, how many cameras do you need? Um, how, what's the lifespan of this project? Do you want the film to exist in 100 years' time? There's thousands of choices. And as a DP, you have to try and weigh in on that at, 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 at lots of different levels. Um, producers would like you to think it's an easier choice than it, than it is. And a lot of producers these days make the choice for you. I get calls all the time from people saying, um, well, we're going to shoot this job, we're going to shoot on the red, or we're going to shoot on Alexa. And I say, why? I said, oh, because that's the camera we shot with last time and we can get it cheap. And it might be totally the wrong choice. And now you're in a position of either talking them out of it or just saying, you know, I'd rather have an easy life and the paycheck and go home. So um, that question, the central question, which is about this forum tonight, is what camera do you use? is an impossible question to answer. And often it has to do with budget and schedule also. As Peter said, he, they wanted to shoot on film, but what they could afford was, was the high-end camera that he chose. Uh, and I think what we've seen happen since the 1990s through today is that the audience no longer really cares how you capture the film. Um, Way back in the day, there was the theatrical image, and it was a perfect, solidly mounted, perfectly lit, perfectly composed, 35 millimeter meter anamorphic film starring Charlton Heston or Cary Grant or Gary Cooper or someone like that. And that paradigm shifted somewhere around the early 1990s with films like JFK that were shooting Robert Richardson, a brilliant cinematographer shot in 8 millimeter, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter black and white, color, video, and the media began to mix and it began to, and the audience began to not necessarily need the theatrical image. Many cinematographers were shocked by this because they wanted the theatrical image, but the audience changed. And uh, today, I don't believe that they, they care how it's captured. They see so much on YouTube, they see so much on the social media, uh, films like Paranormal Activity, films like Blair Witch Project were made big successes and they were shot mm, like this. People don't care. If, well, yeah, I disagree with thing, I, think, I think people care. Yeah, but the one thing that they have to have, the, the one thing the film has to be is compelling. If you can hold the audience's attention, they will watch if it's on, if it's on home video, as Danny Boyle proved with 28 Days Later, if it's on 16 millimeter film, as Darren Anofsky proved with the Swan, if it's on 35, if it's on high def, it's on, if it's on 70, which, is, which Mr. Nolan is proving right now, it has to be compelling. It has to be a good story. It has to hold their attention. That's the bottom line. It's not really what camera you use. I don't think, that's, um, I don't think the, um, the audience has ever been aware of what technology gets used. Like if you take an average um, cinema goer in the 1950s and say, what camera were they using? They wouldn't know. But they would be, I think uh, audiences are enormously sophisticated in being able to, come, uh, to deconstruct. It's not entirely the, true. Technoscope, for instance, was advertised outside the cinema. Um, people would, you know, it was a draw card. It was, in, that, in that respect, in terms of um, spectacle films, sure. That, that you can, you, there was branding exercises within that. But there, people had a very passing interest in, um, like, you know, Technoscope meant the size of the image and the grandeur of it, rather than it didn't describe. They didn't know what the camera looked like or what the lenses looked like. I think the technique side of it is was then was very much part of the black art of being a cinematographer. And that at that point in um, in the evolution of our craft um, was a very very um, secretive uh, organization, and it was very kept within a group of people. These days, you can pick up any magazine, you read in Variety, they'll tell you what kind of camera they were shooting on. That that wasn't. If you read American Cinematographer magazine from the 1950s and 1960s, they'll give you incredible detail about, um, about um, what cameras were being used. You read variety of the same period, and they don't even mention the camera. These days, they'll say, oh, so-and-so is shooting with two reds in, a, in this way, and they'll talk about the technique. The technique has become much more fashionable to talk yeah, about. Yeah, and in a way, the technology, because it's, it's so abundant and it's changing on a week-by-week -week basis, has become uh, part of the mix, has become part of the the star package. What what's the newest technology that we 